forgot to mention it was that because of Morgan, the thought of the CDC popped into Rick's head. Because of Morgan, Rick realized that zombie scratches and bites, or more so bites, can turn a human and can possibly kill a human. And because of Morgan, Rick survived, which I thought was pretty awesome. Oh, poor Morgan. Poor, poor Morgan. Man, if you haven't seen season three, season three basically tells you what happened to Morgan. I'll be there pretty, pretty soon. But if you haven't gotten up to that point, definitely. And if you don't remember season three, go back through it and definitely watch it. Poor Morgan. Anyways, this episode, Lori and Shane, everybody knows you're having sex. Everyone knows. No one's going to say anything because you guys are adults, but we all know, honey. You, you two are in love with each other or having sex or comforting each other. One of the two. And for some strange reason, I got the feeling when Lori kind of like, before they had sex and she was grabbing her necklace, I have a strange feeling that Lori was trying to, like, holding out hope that Rick was still alive and she was just using this as comfort like she really didn't have feelings feelings for Shane but Shane on the other hand was looking like listen I left him hopefully he died on his own I hope he doesn't come back and see what's going on basically he looked kind of guilty and then when they actually had you know actual sex I don't know like that scene seemed kind of rushed but they can't do so much in this time frame but still like Shane for me I don't know I don't know if he'll be no forget what I was going to say I'm not even going to say it um thank god for Glenn and I love this scene by the way because Glenn saves Rick doesn't have to he could have just left Rick in that tank and like dude have fun I'm going back to the mall but he saved him and he his reasoning behind that was like listen I'm saving people because when I need help somebody's gonna save me And judging by the current state of Walking Dead season 4, yeah, it's reciprocated for Glenn quite a few times. But anyway, everybody's kind of pissed off at that scene. And I'm kind of pissed off too because I was like, and in fact, I'm not even kind of, I would have been pissed off if like I'm hiding in the mall and this dude is outside shooting up the OK Corral. I would have been like, listen. Dude, you almost got us killed. You better figure out a way for us to get out of here because you just killed our exit strategy. And did anybody notice the dude or the walker with the, the rock? Man, these walkers in season one, oh my God. Like they, <laughs> they're some thinkers and some runners and some geniuses because the ones for the most recent season... I mean, they're kind of slow and kind of dumb. Maybe it's the progression of the, the virus itself. Maybe that's how it's going with the seasons. But the first season zombies were pretty much on point and determined. Okay. Andrea's little um, mental decline began in this episode. The crazy part is that I didn't notice it until I was watching it today. And I realized, like... You could tell that Andrea was holding it on a lot. Maybe she was seeing a shrink before this. Maybe she was on Prozac before this. Something. But Andrea did not wrap too tight. And she nearly killed Rick. Thank God for Martinez. And Martinez realized, listen. Your gun still has a safety on. You're not going to do anything. Just put the gun down. So when we finally meet Merle Dixon. Merle Dixon, oh my God. Merle Dixon is too funny. Regardless of everything he says, all the ignorant stuff, because he's an ignoramus. From time to time, he's an ignorant, prejudiced butt, butthead. But anyway, um, racist, prejudiced butthead. But anyway, he, for the most part, is pretty funny because it's like he's talking all this talk. He has the gun, and then he attacks T-Dog because he knows T-Dog is going to fight, but then he's really not going to fight because T-Dog seems like a really nice guy. T-Dog doesn't seem like that type of guy that'll really go fist to cuffs with him. Like, T-Dog tries to fight, but again, T-Dog really doesn't fight that hard like he could have. But anyway, um, and it's pretty funny how Rick is the one that takes him down. And Rick does that, I think, another... Yeah, he does that another time in another season, but it's just too funny. And 
This is also the scene when Rick is called Officer Friendly and Andrea is called Sugar Dits. When he calls, when does he call her Blondie? I'm trying to remember, but he does call her Blondie also. But Sugar Tits, this is, and he, he basically wants to get with her, but she's like, "Listen, I'd rather die." And he's like, "Well, I figured you were a lesbian," but he doesn't say lesbian, but you know what he says. <laughs> that scene was too funny. And that, what I thought was funny is every time he tried to mess with Jackie, like Jack, like no, in fact, he never messed with Jackie. Out of everybody on that thing, never messed with Jackie. Jackie. Jackie flipped him off. Jackie told him, would you just be quiet? And he stayed quiet. Like, so I'm like, so this is all makes sense with my Michonne theory. But I'll get to my Michonne theory in season three. But anywho, um, we learned a lot about Andrea in this episode. We learned that she has a sister named Amy. Amy loves mystical things. She loves um, dragons and fairies and mermaids and stuff like that. It's pretty cute, so... It's a shame what happens this episode, but Amy seemed pretty cool at this point. Strangely, though, Merle is so, like, I wouldn't call him cocky. It's the point where he's, like, trying to reason with T-Dog to let him out. And I'm laughing at this scene because T-Dog, we're not letting him out. Hell no. He's like, so I should just let you get loose so you could go and shoot the officer? So basically, Merle, you're kind of stuck. And then, um... I'm trying to think of what else happened because I did take some notes. I'm trying to think of what happens. The crazy part of the scene, though, is once they go, I guess, underground, and then Rick comes up with the idea of them to take this walker, cut them all up, put the entrails all on himself and on Glenn, and which I was eating, by the way, during that scene. The first time I saw it, I was, ugh, ugh. But after seeing it for a while, I was like, eh, we finished my barbecue. But anyway, um... Rick gives T-Dog that key. Now, Rick never says, oh, T-Dog, go let Merle out. He's basically looking at him like, listen, this is your call, dude. If you want to let him out, I don't really care. You can leave his ass up there. I don't even care. And I'm cracking up, and this scene is too funny. Too funny. Too funny. And, like, that whole scene, because the idea, the whole thing with them going outside is that they're going to get the truck to bring it back to the mall, the whole nine yard. And what cracks me up is how everybody's like rushing upstairs. And like they're rushing to watch Rick and Glenn walking and, and Merle's like talking to him and they're not even paying attention. Or as my grandmother used to say, they're not studding about him. And I'm just like, okay, well. So when they finally like leave, once they get the truck and everything and they're leaving, it's pretty funny how everyone basically races to go and get their stuff and no one pays attention to them except for T-Dog. I'm sorry, but t dog and Merle, you would have kept your behind up there because after you beat me, called me the N-word and all that stuff, honey, you would have stayed up there. But T-Dog was a good guy. T-Dog tried. Yeah, he lost the key, but at least he tried. And he accidentally knocked over the uh, tools, unfortunately. And then, but he had the good sense to lock the door so that it would take a while before the walkers could, I guess, come on the roof and get to Merle. Because I mentioned about the walkers with the rock, yeah, dude, apparently there were two or three with rocks and they were banging, broke the glass of the first door and then they broke for the second one and thank God T-Dog was able to catch up with everybody and they left. But in doing so, they ended up leaving Merle Dixon on the roof. Sucks for him and well, that was my favorite part of the episode because like, he's so humbled in that scene. Like, he's freaking out, and he's like, the, all of you can go to hell and such and such. I'm like, dude, like, you kind of got what you deserved in this scene, unfortunately. Like, you couldn't be reasoned with. You were loose cannon. You had to go, honey. But anyway, um, stay tuned for my next uh, Walking Dead review for Episode 3, Tell It to the Frogs. Make sure you guys check out my review for 24. My review next week for Believe and whatever else I feel like reviewing. Whatever else that seems to pop up out of the woodwork that I'm going to review. Stay tuned, guys. But anyway, check me out at SageValentine on Twitter.com. You guys have a great week. Stay cool. Stay warm. Enjoy it. And summer's coming soon. I'm a happy camper. And in two weeks... 
I'm going to be a really happy camper. I'll tell you guys all about that later. But anyway, um, take care, and I love you all. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>